Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're tackling a, a really interesting puzzle in AI. Why is it so tricky for these big language models, LLMs, you know, to handle really rigorous logic, like mathematical proofs? It is a fascinating challenge, isn't it? These models are amazing with language, but that jump to the kind of absolute certainty you need in math, that's been tough. Yeah, and that's probably why you're tuning in. You want to get your head around these uh, complex topics, but quickly, without getting totally swamped in jargon. So think of this as our shortcut to understanding some really cutting-edge stuff. Exactly. Our mission today is to dive into this new approach, a kind of neurosymbolic strategy. Mm -hmm. The research we've looked at, it details this, well, really clever attempt to make AI more trustworthy especially in formal areas like geometry where precision is just key. Okay, neurosymbolic. Let's break that down. So as I understand it, there are kind of two main pieces here. That's right. First, the AI looks at similar problems that are already solved, almost like um, studying work examples. Mm. And second, there's this really strict automated checker, a verifier, that looks at the AI's proof and tells it if it's right or wrong and how. Precisely. It's blending the AI's knack for generation with very structured validation, <laughs> a neat combination. So let's start with the problem itself. Why do LLMs struggle so much with proofs? Well, it boils down to how they work. LLMs are fundamentally about pattern recognition in massive amounts of text. They predict the next likely word or sequence of words. But a mathematical proof isn't about likelihood. It requires you know, strict logical deduction step by step, manipulating symbols according to rules, understanding abstract concepts that's different from just statistical patterns. Right, math needs absolute truth, no ambiguity allowed. That's gonna be tough for a model trained on, well, the internet, which is full of ambiguity. Exactly, and Look. proofs can be long, right? They need sustained logical coherence, building argument upon argument, sometimes in complex hierarchies. LLMs can sometimes lose the thread. So being able to generate verifiable proofs, proofs we know are correct, why is that such a big deal? What does that unlock? Oh, it's huge. If we can get there, it massively boosts the reliability and accuracy of these models for anything requiring deep reasoning. Mm. Think about applications not just in pure math, but science, education, even safety critical systems, where you absolutely need to trust the AI's logic. Okay, right. Big implications. So let's get into this neurosymbolic solution. You mentioned analogical guidance and symbolic verification. Let's start with the analogy part. Sure. So the analogical guidance, it's inspired partly by cognitive science, how we humans solve problems. We often think back, have I seen something like this before? Yeah. And there was also prior work showing LLM solving simpler, like grade school math problems get better if you prompt them with similar examples. Ah, so it's like nudging the LLM. Hey, remember that other geometry problem? The proof for that one might have some useful tricks for this one. That's the basic idea, yeah. Uh -huh. By retreating these analogous problems and their proofs, you give the LLM a much better starting point. It helps it identify relevant theorems, reduces the guesswork, you know, saves computation. But how does it know which problems are analogous? Humans have intuition, but an AI. Right, no intuition. It uses a process called abstraction. They take the formal description of a problem, the setup, the conditions, the goal, and they generalize it. They replace specific names like points or lines with a generic tag like word, and numbers become numb. Got it. So angle ABC is 40 degrees becomes something like angle word is numb degrees, stripping it down to the structure. Exactly. They apply this to the construction, the conditions, the goal. Then they can compare these abstracted structures. They use something called jacquard similarity, basically. Mm -hmm. It measures the overlap between the abstracted parts of two problems how many elements are shared. They also check if the abstracted goals are an exact match because that's a really strong indicator of analogy. Okay, so it's looking for structural similarity in the math itself, not just superficial resemblance. Precisely. And to make this work well, they actually trained a machine learning model, a regressor, specifically to predict proof similarity based on this structural similarity. They used a massive data set, something like 24.4 million problem pairs, and focused the model on identifying pairs likely to have very, very similar proofs, like over 95% similar. Wow. Yeah, and their predictor was pretty good at spotting these highly analogous cases, even though they're relatively rare overall, about 71% accurate for that high threshold. That's a clever way to filter things down. Okay, so the LLM gets these helpful examples. What about the second piece, the symbolic verification? Right, the verifier. This is a strict checker. It takes the proof the LLM generates and rigorously analyzes it for logical soundness. If it finds an error, it doesn't just say wrong, it provides structured feedback. And this happens in a loop. The LLM gets the feedback, tries to revise its proof, 
and submits it again. So it's iterative, like a tutor pointing out specific mistakes, not just giving a grade. Exactly like that. For this research, they focused on Euclidean geometry as a test case. It's symbolic, rule-based, verifiable, the good domain for this. And their goal wasn't really to beat specialized geometry solvers, but to quantify how much this whole neurosymbolic method actually helps a general LLM improve. Does this verifier have like a rule book of geometry? It does. It has a theorem dictionary with formal definitions of theorems, premises, and conclusions. But that dictionary can be huge, like nearly 200 theorems, even more with variations. So to make it manageable, they did something smart based on the analogy part. They mostly restricted the theorems the LM could easily access to just those used in the proofs of the analogous problems they retrieved. Ah, using the analogy to focus the rule book too. Exactly. It dramatically cuts down the search space. They found that using theorems from, say, the top 100 analogous problems gave something like 96% coverage of the theorems actually needed for the target proof, using only about 14% of the full dictionary on average. That's a huge efficiency gain. Okay, so the LLM generates a proof using these focused examples and rules. How does the verifier actually check it? What's under the hood? It's a symbolic reasoning system. It translates the proof steps and the geometry into logic formulas and algebra. Then it uses what's called an SMT solver satisfiability modulo theories. Think of it as a powerful logic engine that checks if everything is consistent. Does the conclusion logically follow from the premises and the steps taken? according to the rules. So the verifier isn't solving the problem itself, it's just checking if the LLM's reasoning holds up. Precisely. It doesn't know the answer beforehand. And the researchers identified three tiers of errors it can flag. Tier one is basically syntax errors, calling a theorem incorrectly wrong arguments like a grammatical mistake in the proof language. Okay. Tier two is a premise violation. The LLM tries to use a theorem, but it hasn't actually proven the conditions needed to apply that theorem yet. The feedback here points out the missing piece. That seems really useful feedback. It is. And tier three is goal not reached. The proof might be logically sound step by step, but it just doesn't arrive at the conclusion it was supposed to prove. Maybe it's incomplete, or maybe the verifier derived a different answer based on the steps. They use a specific tool, the Z3 theorem prover, to help with those tier two and three checks, and had some symbolic workarounds for things like trig functions that Z3 doesn't handle directly. That sounds incredibly thorough, a multi-layered check. <laughs> so the big question, did it work? What were the results when they tested this whole pipeline? The results were uh, pretty stunning, actually. They tested it on a standard benchmark, formal Geo7K, using OpenAI's O1 model. They compared their full method against a baseline, just the LLM without analogy or verification. And they tried different settings, like one shot, one shot with retries based on feedback, and multiple runs allowing retries. The numbers. Okay, get this. The baseline model, on its own, got about 10% average accuracy in generating correct proofs. 10%. The full neurosymbolic pipeline. Yeah. 80% average accuracy. From 10% to 80%. That's that's huge. It's a massive jump. Even with just a single run, but allowing the verifier feedback and retries, their method hit 68% accuracy. Still vastly better than the baseline. So it really seems like both parts, the analogy and the verification loop, were critical. Absolutely. They did analysis to tease that apart. Just adding the analogy, retrieval significantly boosted performance compared to the baseline in all settings. And then adding the verifier feedback loop on top consistently improved results further for both their method and the baseline, though the baseline started much lower. So the analogy gives it a better starting direction and the verifier helps it navigate the path correctly. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And interestingly, their method needed fewer retries and fewer overall runs to get to a correct proof compared to the baseline. Another key finding, when both methods got the numerical answer right, the analogy-based method was much more likely to have a correct proof backing it up, at about 85% proof success rate when the answer was right, versus only 59% for the baseline. Ah, so the baseline was guessing the right answer correctly more often, but without the solid reasoning. It seems that way. It highlights the difference between just getting an answer and actually generating trustworthy, verifiable reasoning. That's crucial for building reliable AI. Okay, so this looks incredibly promising for geometry. What's next? Where does this research lead? Well, they see potential to extend this beyond geometry. Think about other domains needing automated proof or verification, maybe verifying software came or more abstract math theorem proving. Mm -hmm. There's also a really exciting potential application in education. Oh, how so? 
Imagine an AI tutor that doesn't just check answers, but guides a student by showing similar solved problems, the analogy part, and gives specific feedback on their logical steps, the verifier part. It could be incredibly powerful for learning reasoning skills. Like a super patient, knowledgeable tutor. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah. And they also mentioned exploring, you know, more advanced verification techniques, maybe more sophisticated ways to find analogies, lots of avenues to explore. So the big takeaway here really is that this neurosymbolic approach, combining LLM pattern matching with analogy and symbolic checks, dramatically improves their ability to handle formal logic, at least in geometry proofs. Yes, it's a powerful demonstration of how combining neural and symbolic techniques can lead to more reliable, trustworthy AI especially for these critical STEM domains where correctness is non-negotiable. It really does make you think, doesn't it? If this hybrid approach works so well for math proofs, what other complex fields could benefit? Where else could blending AI's pattern-finding strengths with the rigor of formal systems help us overcome current limitations? Especially where, you know, verifiable reasoning is just essential. It gives you something to chew on. It certainly does. And for anyone listening who wants to get into the nitty-gritty, the sources we used are definitely worth exploring for the full details on the methods and results.